One of the cool things about City of Heroes is how many different and interesting characters you can make, but every character is so different I want to feel different when I play them. If you take a minute to match their color scheme and the UI and set up some character themed binds, it can be a much more fun experience. The good news is it's not hard to do. Granted, when you enter the game, you'll have to wait for the various notices, claim your Paragon rewards, arrange the handful of window options that aren't saved by the Save Settings button, but that doesn't usually take too long. The next thing I'm going to do is adjust the windows and the chat bubble to match my character's costume, power, or theme so that they feel different when I'm loading them. Everything looks different to match the character I'm playing at the time. Do keep in mind that the speech bubbles here will only work for things that you type, not for for things that you bind, which I'll get to in a minute. So speaking of binds, there are some that I want on every character, but instead of typing them manually, I'd much rather set them all up in advance and load them in seconds, and I'm going to show you how I do that. So I use bind load file to load just this one file, and then press the number keys. One, two, three, four done. All their custom binds are set, all their custom macros loaded. Not only is this easy for setting up a new character, but if I move to a different server or there's some kind of error or I need to reset their stuff, it's it's just as easy as typing a command and a couple numbers. So let me walk you through it. The first thing you're going to do is um, you're going to create a binds folder at the root of your hard drive, and you need it to be at the root so that it's easy to get to. Now, in my case, I set a symbolic link, which makes it treat it like it's at the root, even though it's not, but that's not super important and it's kind of out of the scope here, but there's a cool tip for you if you if you know how to do that. Um, Let's see. And then it's all a matter of setting up some files. Now the first and most important is the base binds file, and that's where I put the customizations that I want every character that I play to have. And it's something like if you've ever played Smash Bros, the the neat thing about that is that the B is always a special attack, A is always a standard attack, the one button is always for jump. That way you can load any player and play them to at least a basic level because the, the most important commands are the same for all of them. And that's how I play City of Heroes. Same idea. No need to try to remember which button did what because the most important keys are the same for all of my characters. And that's why I have this file with all these different binds. This is the collection that I've made over the years of the stuff that I felt was necessary for every character. And I'll go ahead and go through each, but I'll put a timestamp uh, on screen to tell you what to skip to if, if you don't want to, to see what they all do. Okay, so starting from the top, the first thing I have is a a basic command that I saw on live constantly, where when somebody was in the middle of typing, it would put a character themed message above their head. And I always thought that was super cool. And this is how you do that. You bind to the enter key, which you'd normally use to chat. You know, if you want to say something, you just say, enter, type your message, enter, done. This will intercept that and it will add a little extra to it so that when you press the enter key, it automatically puts you in AFK mode with a message on the top. In this case, it would be thinking. And then the next command uh, that it executes simultaneously is start chat, which puts the cursor in the chat box. So it works exactly the same as the enter key normally would, except adding that AFK command in there. And then you can put a custom message instead of thinking you could do whatever, plotting evil or whatever. So next is control enter. So with just control enter, I automatically start the chat with some text. And that text is the shortcut command to type in the global channel for rebirth. In this case, it's slash RB. And then I add my own level and archetype because it's fun. And it already lists my name, so I don't need to put that. And but the cursor is already there and it's right after the the name and arch or the level and archetype. So it's as simple as control enter, type my message, enter, done. Super easy, super fast way to get onto the global channel. Uh, the next ones are just your standard use inspiration in slot one, two, three, four, five. Uh, so nothing super exciting there. The F7 key is always a ready command, but I like to put a little emote on it and add some local chat as well. Uh, the local chat is to keep it in character, but I don't want to confuse my team, so I still say ready in the team channel, and that's basically it. Now, F6 is always congratulations, I clap. F8 is 
calling out a problem character or something of note. Uh, so I say in the team, hey, there's a, you know, whatever it is I, uh, my cursor is on. That's basically the three that I use the most. I do have two joke ones, F9 and F10 for the really long cut scenes during eye trials. Um, that's just for giggles. If if you press those keys while the cutscene is going, you'll see the text pop up right on top of Desdemona or or marauder or whatever so that's fun and then f12 is my teleport bind so every character who has the teleport power they will say something about the target and be clear that they're teleporting you and then they will execute the teleport power you have to select your target first but then you press the key and and it just works now uh, in case you didn't know one of the cool things that rebirth has done is they've combined teleport foe and recall friend into one power called recall so that makes that a lot of fun to use now the the next one is the letter o and o is set up to load another bind file that turns off the UI and then changes the binding of the O key to turn the the screen back on. Um, I, I can show chain binds later, but that's what that does. I, it's a toggle now. If I press O, the UI goes off. If I press it again, the UI comes back on. Simple. T is really cool. That's, that's essentially a seek bind. Let me explain how that works. If I'm looking for something, let's say a crate, I press the letter T. The chat now has the term slash bind F target name space. Then I type what I'm looking for and I press enter. And now the F key is bound to that. So while I'm flying around, I can tap the F key. And if there's a crate anywhere on my screen, it will highlight it for me. Super easy way to find specific targets. And I used to target, uh, I used to type this bind so much that I bound the creation of the bind to the T key, and I call that my target key. So now it works like this. I press T, type what I'm looking for, hit enter, and then I just tap F. And if I want to change targets, T, type what I want, enter, tap F. Super cool. Next, backslash is follow, because I, I stole the F key, which used to be follow, so I just make it backslash. And, um, you know, feels kind of random, but since I use it the same on every one of my characters, it's not hard to remember. The up and down keys turn on and off flight powers, and I tried to fit everyone in there that I could, uh, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward. And I was playing Final Fantasy XIV for a while, so I got really used to using the Z key to drop out of the sky, and so I set that in my base binds file for all of my characters. When it didn't work in City of Heroes, it was driving me crazy, so I fixed it. The rest are just kind of like for play or, you know, nothing super important. If somebody hits me with Mystic Fortune, I always hit the right key and turn into a box or a barrel or something. Um, left is just my default key that says uh, it's time to chill and goes to my zero costume, which is usually my incognito costume, just regular street clothes. The mouse cord plus forward, that means if you press both the left and right mouse key, you'll run forward. And I use that a lot when I'm using the keyboard one-handed, like if I'm eating or something like that. Left shift is teleport. Teleport, translocation, other types of teleportation. Uh, and, and I need to add jaunt in here because that is a new power that comes with the experimentation power pool. It's a super speed with a short term or a... Uh, short distance rapid fire teleport. It's very, very cool. The single apostrophe targets the closest enemy and follows them. It's my hug key. I'm going to go hug them. And that I use a lot if I want to very quickly close the distance with, the, with an enemy. L is location. If I am looking for something specific like a badge, I can just tap the L key while I'm moving around. Uh, this is a good reason to use the mouse cord because if I'm tapping the L key, my fingers are nowhere, nowhere near WASD. So that way it's much easier to find things. Max inactive FPS is not a bind. It's just a command. As soon as this file loads, it will automatically input that and change the settings of your client so that if the window loses focus, because I play in windowed mode, because I often play with two or more accounts, um, usually two, that way, any window that is not in focus is only running at five frames per second, so it's not using as much bandwidth. And then smacking and slapping people, hey, that's fun. What are you going to do? So anyway, 
That is the base mines file. Now that is something I use on all of my characters. The next thing we're going to want to do is create a folder for that specific character to keep their bind files together. I always create a folder for every character. And in this case, I'm going to use my main character, Jordan Yen. And you don't want to type the whole name because it's a lot more text. So I always just pick a short word that describes them. In this case, Yen is good enough. In here, you're going to see just these two files, and they're the two main files. Everything else is optional, and uh, if there's interest, I can do videos explaining what other kinds of files I use for different characters. But for the most part, it's just these. So the first thing you're going to do is open the character binds file, and what you see is these are overrides for the base binds file. They're, some of them are the same keys, but now I've got them colored to match my chat, and the text that they say matches the character of the character I'm playing, whether that be villainous or heroic or cheesy or, you know, whatever. A good example here is where the ready command, well, now I have it not only say something in the right color and in the right tone, but it also runs a costume change emote. So basically, when I'm ready to rumble, I press the button, she says ready to go and changes her costume. And just as a quick aside, the way that I was able to match the colors here is when you're looking at the chat bubble in the client, if you press Windows Shift S to get a quick screen capture of what's on the screen, you put that in an image editor that has a color picker, it will give you the hex code to use for the background and then use the foreground, and that's how you'll match all your, your bind text colors to your chat. Boom. So the next file is just called Yen, and I always make it the same name as the folder for simplicity. And the file has two important things that you need to change. The first is to make sure that the line loading the character binds has the right folder name, which is easy enough. And then the next is to pick all the pre-made other bind files that I might need. The first is the base binds file that I showed you before, and that always has to come first. And then I have to load my character binds file to override that. But from there, every line is a different bind file. And the ones that I have available are my base macros. And just like before, the macros just load. They're not bound to anything. But the key is I was using the same ones on every character. Useful things like loading into my villain base or my hero base or setting the Ouroboros portal, but right in front of me instead of having to click the ground. I just found that useful, so I put that on every character. There's not a lot of them, but I use them on everyone, so I made sure to put them in their own file so that I can load them very easily. The next are the farm macros, and I didn't create this file. This was originally someone else's, and I forget who, but the bottom line is they create a series of macro buttons that, if you press them, they combine inspirations into attack inspirations instead with a single button press. So that's super useful. Now granted that only works if you have three endurance or resist or whatever, but it's super quick to do with single click of a macro. The next file is a farm numbers bind file, which is designed to work with the farm macros. And the way this works is that for the numbers one through four, it has a roll down procedure. The first thing it does is try to combine inspirations, and then it will do that until it hasn't got any left to combine. Then, using that same key, it will instead eat the inspirations, which will give you a damage buff. Then, if it runs out of those, or there weren't any to begin with, it just launches the power that's in power tray one slot one, like normal, or one through four, as it were. So the only disadvantage of this is that it can't be done in a single press. You have to keep tapping the button, you know, tap, 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 and eventually it launches the power. But it is a very quick way without moving your mouse around and trying to find the buttons to very quickly clear your inspiration tray, use all the buffs you can to make yourself hit harder, and then hit a power to attack an enemy. And... That is a really quick way to get through large swaths of enemies. So I use that on my main DPS characters, scrappers and tanks and brutes and that sort of thing. All right, the next bind file that I have is called numbers. And this is the most important one to load. Uh, but I think it'll make more sense if I go back to the original file to explain. So back in that original bind load file, you remember that? So I load the single file... And all that does is it binds the number keys to other commands. So when I press 
after I've loaded this one file with the bind load file command, I press number one, it loads base binds. I press two, it overrides with character binds. I press three, it loads my base macros. I press four, and if it's a DPS character, maybe that's the farm macros, and then I press five for farm numbers, so they go together. Or I just bind number four to regular numbers, and either number file, either the numbers bind file or the farm numbers, resets all the number keys to normal attacks, essentially. And so the whole operation is done. And that way I can just load one file, press the number keys, one, two, three, four, maybe one, two, three, four, five, and my entire system of keybinds, macros, and everything is all loaded for that character just like that. And it's just so much easier to play with and enjoy tons and tons of characters on City of Heroes when you do this. So I hope that was helpful.